The Last Jedi, The Snyder Cut, Twilight. Just hearing those titles can evoke a visceral reaction in the listener. Either love or hate. Some films polarize audiences in ways that, say, E.T. or The Shawshank Redemption just don't. But why? Today, we'll discuss the most divisive movies in film history and what makes them so polarizing, right here on By the Numbers. With help of my universally beloved AI Fanda, I'm an acquired taste, and Daniel Paris of statsignificant.com, we'll use data to find the most polarizing films. Our method? Measuring variance among online movie reviews. If reviewers disagree on a film's quality, the ratings will fluctuate wildly between the highest and lowest scores possible. By contrast, less polarizing films get scores within a much smaller range, so our analysis will use the standard deviation of a film's ratings to identify the most divisive works. Venda? Scanning. Scanning. Analysis complete. All right, here's our top five. Coming in at number one is Plan 9 from Outer Space. The Ed Wood disaster piece that's either the most bafflingly stupid thing put to screen or brilliantly entertaining for largely the same reasons. Next up is Passion of the Christ, the Mel Gibson directed film about the crucifixion of Jesus that thankfully was released before social media was a thing. Can you imagine the discourse? Lord have mercy. Twilight, the timeless love story between a high school student and the hundred year old who watches her sleep. Pink Flamingos, which features the drag queen Divine eating actual dog poop on camera, which divides filmgoers as to whether that's endearing, disgusting, or endearingly disgusting. And rounding out the top five's most polarizing is The Texas Chainsaw Massacre, a film whose unsettling imagery will lodge itself into your brain whether you like it or not. Here's the rest of the top 15 for reference. Most of these movies sort neatly into a few categories. There's low budget cult classics like Plan 9, Pink Flamingos, and Rocky Horror. These are usually transgressive on purpose, embraced by contrarian cinephiles for the very same reasons mainstream audiences hate them. Then there's inescapable franchise films like Twilight and Transformers. These are so culturally pervasive that lots of people begrudgingly check them out on sheer force of popularity alone. It's hard to underestimate the inescapability of Twilight in the 2000s. It influenced fashion, literature, and even tourism. You could not escape. And you probably decided you would hate it or love it before you even saw the first frame. We also have horror movies that went mainstream. When it comes to the horror genre, there is little correlation between quality and a film's box office performance. Horror devotees do not care about the opinions of film critics, film scholars, film theorists, letterbox reviewers, IMDb reviewers, or anyone else. But what happens when a horror film crosses over into the mainstream? Films like The Blair Witch Project and Texas Chainsaw Massacre are horror hits that made their way into the zeitgeist, for better or worse. Some mainstream moviegoers appreciated the macabre frights offered by these stories, while others swore off the horror genre forever. What's intriguing about this list of movies is the staying power of these films within the popular imagination. Love or hate, they're still talked about today. But what elements of these movies simultaneously insult and thrill audiences? What makes a movie polarizing? Let's see if genre has something to do with it. Fanda, which genres have the highest ratings variance? Scanning. Scanning. Displaying results. Horror leads the pack a genre that's always been testing the boundaries of social and cultural norms. Family films are the second highest variants, with the difficult task of appealing to both parents and children. Your kid loves Ice Age Continental Drift, but mom and dad are dreaming of ways to make Sid the Sloth extinct again. Science fiction is another love it or hate it genre. Same with the highly subjective comedy and the movie musical. But genres are, by design, quite broad. Is there a more granular approach to parsing the characteristics of polarizing films? Fortunately, our review data encourages viewers to tag films with details of story, cast, setting, and technique, such as 3D, Africa, Bill Murray, Violent, Whimsical, etc. Fanda, examine review variation by tag. Scanning. Scanning. Displaying results. Low-budget movies are subject to the most significant ratings variants. Their polarizing reception may be their need for bold stories to get attention, or from studios dismissing them due to their controversial content. Movies tagged with Jesus also experience high ratings variants, which is a weird sentence to say out loud. The story of Christ has been adapted a whole bunch of times, some highly controversial, some conventional, and some bizarre. Also surprisingly, movies tagged as stupid are polarizing, depending on your tolerance for idiocy, as are movies with Jim Carrey, an actor responsible for multiple stupidity-centric films. Love you, Jim. Using all these tags, we can design the most polarizing film ever. All we need to do is to produce a stupid, low-budget, horror musical franchise that stars Jim Carrey as Jesus. All right, now that that's settled, let's take a look at whether movies are becoming more polarizing with time. Fanda? Scanning. Scanning. Displaying results. Not really. There's an increase in variability from the 70s to the 90s, then a clear drop in polarization starting in the early 2000s. It's unclear why exactly films would be getting less polarizing while everything else is, but we can guess at the reasons. For one, Hollywood moved toward franchise filmmaking in the early 2000s. 
The success of the Lord of the Rings trilogy and Sony Spider-Man series popularized serialized movie installments built upon a foundation of well-known intellectual property. Another reason could just be the internet. The internet fosters an instant feedback loop that amplifies the scope of any criticisms, significantly influencing filmmakers' willingness to take risks. Producers are hyper aware of the ways their content may upset people now and preemptively remove anything objectionable. But in our opinion, polarization isn't a bad thing when it comes to cinema and art in general. Disagreement, when handled properly, can amplify a film's impact and lead to new insights and genuinely enjoyable discussion. Transgressive works like A Clockwork Orange, American History X, or Old Boy aren't intended to elicit one standard reaction in every person. These movies thrive in the decades following their release because their reception sparks so many different thoughts and emotions in so many different people. But for most filmmakers, failing isn't fun, nor is losing money or being told that your work sucks. At the same time, conversations about art are less thrilling when everybody agrees. Wouldn't you agree? Don't forget to like and subscribe.